back to the channel. My name's Kelly. I do a range of videos all about life in general, um, Disney, musicals, comic cons, books, all sorts of things, general life and travel videos, just because I enjoy making the content. If you have just watched the Disneyland haul, you will have seen me buy this and this and we will have covered everything else that we bought. Um, but this one is a bucket list recap. Before we went away, we made a bit of a list of to what we would want to achieve whilst we were in the parks. So we are going to go through it today. This is our first bucket list. So I'm, part of me is gutted we didn't do it all. I'm not gonna lie to you, I am a bit gutted. But what we did was a lot. And I'm happy with the ones we did, the ones we didn't do, I'm not so bothered about, but I'll explain why when we get into it. So the first point on the bucket list was to ride Buzz Lightyear every day. We rode it twice every day. We kept score, but we had a few difficult goes. So the first game, I won. The second game, I won again, but... Now here's the way it goes wrong. The ride crashed at about halfway around and our scores stopped totaling. Even when it restarted, it just wouldn't go anymore. So I won, but technically Mike could have won had the ride have kept going. So we disregarded that one. The second day, we rode it again another twice. Oh, did we ride one? I can't remember, but I might won one and then I won one, I think. So it was like two, one. Then the third day, we went to go on for the third time, I don't think we actually rode it on the second, on the third day twice. I think we only rode it once, but we had a really bad experience. We queued for about 45 minutes, which was longer than what was advertised because it broke just as we got to the front. It went fully down. It came back up after about 10 minutes of waiting. So we were too bothered, but then we got on and my gun wasn't working. I will insert a picture <laughs> of my face at the photo opportunity because I was livid. I think by the end, I had about 700 points and I'm normally getting well into like nearly hundreds of thousands. Like it was ridiculous. So Mike won that one. But again, that was on a bit of a technicality because mine wasn't working and Mike did try my gun and it was not working. So it wasn't like it was just me because I was like, is this just me, Mike? Try it. And he tried it. It didn't work. So it was definitely the ride. So yes, we rode it every day. We wanted a proper best of three. We didn't get a best of three. We we did five, but three of them didn't really work. Um, so yeah, we kind of passed it off as a draw until we go next time. And then the competition will start again. <laughs> but yeah, so that one was a draw, but it's a tick off the bucket list. The next point was to eat at a Disney restaurant, which we completed. On the first day, we had a Waltz reservation. Waltz is one that I've seen on other people's vlogs that they've never been able to actually get a book in for. Um, we really liked it. So I think I had, we had a three course meal, a cocktail each, and Mike had a tea at the end. Um, it was quite spenny. It was about 155 euros. Um, for me, it was lovely. I don't know if I'd necessarily pay that amount for that meal again. I think I'd rather go to another one. Um, it was delicious food, but I just don't know if it was necessarily worth the price. So Mike had um, a sweet corn soup, which he said was nice, but it had popcorn in, like actual popcorn, um, which he said was a bit strange because it didn't really go soggy or keep crispy. It was a bit in between. Then he had um, the Arctic char, which was a fish on like wild rice, which did look really nice. And there was like some um, sweet corn in that. Um, he said it was, it looked like sea bass, but had the color of salmon. And he said it was nice, but he wasn't sure if he'd order it again. Um, and then for pudding, he had the lemon meringue pie, which was delicious because I had that also. So for starter, I had, what did I have for starter? Oh, I had the chicken pot pie. 
I didn't really like any of the veggie options and I was trying to cut down on meat, but being a non-meat eater in Disneyland Paris was ridiculously hard. If you're going there as veggie, do your research because I didn't. I'd only just started trying to eat less meat just before we went and I did no like research or anything so just research where i do the best veggie things but yeah i had chicken pot pie for my starter which was lovely because it came with like a little mickey head on the top um and then for main i had mac and cheese now the mac and cheese was incredible it's one of the best mac and cheeses i've ever possibly had in my life it was so nice it didn't taste like fake cheese it tasted like nice smoked cheese it was delicious it was quite rich so i was quite happy with the pudding size they gave me but I imagine some people might say it was quite small and then for pudding I had the lemon meringue which again was delicious that for me was the highlight it was like almost deconstructed it was fabulous it was beautiful absolutely loved it um we both had the 30th cocktail which was nice just tasted like cranberry juice really um and then Mike had a tea so yeah for 155 euros I don't know if it was necessarily worth it but I would recommend going and then I'll maybe try a different one, see what you think. The third point on the bucket list was to buy some new ears. I'm already wearing them, so you can tell that that one was done. Um, so we can tick that one off. They did have a lot of princess ones this time. They had like a big new selection of princess ones. So there was these, there was Belle, Tiana, Snow White brave i think and there was another one i can't quite remember but they were all really good um really bright and colorful Re oh jasmine the jasmine one was beautiful it had like peacock um feather pattern on stunning really really nice um so yeah obviously i ended up buying these the fourth point on the list i might go on a bit on this one because i loved it the fourth point was to eat disney themed snacks brilliant absolutely loved it so the first day we totally forgot if i'm honest that that was a point on the bucket list we totally forgot we totally lost all our inhibitions and everything on the first day totally forgot any plans um so we waited till the second day to have some of the snacks we had the cheesecake pop on the stick which was unbelievable it was a special 30th one it was purple it was so creamy it was unreal, but we got one between the two of us. We actually went back for another one on the third day because it was that nice. It was about five euros, I think. Um, also from the same stall, we got a Mickey beignet, which was about that big. So it was huge. It was very dense. I think I said this on the vlog when I actually vlogged us having the snacks. It was very thick, very heavy. There wasn't really a great ratio of Nutella, which was in the middle to like the bread on the outside it was tasty but i didn't rank it as highly as the cheesecake um then we went over to toy story land where we had we had the buzz Lightyear eclair um and we also had the slinky dog corn dog the slinky dog corn dog if you've ever been to america was just a corn dog it wasn't shaped like him or anything i actually felt a bit guilty eating a slinky dog corn dog because i felt like i was eating a slinky dog um, but it was literally just a corn dog with tomato sauce or mustard on the top, whichever you wanted. The Buzz Lightyear Eclair, if you can get one, get one. They are delicious. I would say that ranks as highly as the Cheesecake Pop. It was so light and so tasty. It had like a hazelnut cream in the middle. It was delicious. It was super, super nice. I think... That was the last set of snacks that we got. I think it was because we went to Stark Factory for tea and had the pizzas and things. So if you, one little thing, if you go to Stark, if you go to Disneyland Paris and you want somewhere quiet to eat, go to Stark Factory on Avengers Campus. It is hidden out the way. I don't think many people are aware of where it is because it's kind of off the beaten track. Um, so it's really, really quiet it's quick service you go up you pick and put on a tray what you want you take it to the till you pay you sit you eat brilliant but the food there is incredible it's so nice but yeah so snacks we did a lot maybe not as many as we would have liked we did go back for a second cheesecake pop like i say and we also went back for another buzz Lightyear eclair 
because they were just yummy and they were our favorite ones so if you've had any really good disney snacks please leave a comment in the box below and tell me what it was what park and how you'd rate it out of 10 because that's really what we were doing. That's the scale we were using. So yeah, it'd be great to hear if anybody's had any other good snacks. Fifth point on the list was to watch the fireworks. We did it. I can tick it off. I can finally say I've seen the fireworks at Disneyland Paris. I've watched so many vlogs of people watching them and them saying that they are the best Disney fireworks out there. And I would agree. They are, they were brilliant. Um, it was hard staying up. We stayed up on the Sunday night for them because we went in June and obviously the sun sets later. They weren't on until about 11 o'clock. So it was hard. It was very hard to stay up, but we managed. We did it. I could tick it off. I loved, there was a, a 10 minute drone show before at 10 to 10 called... Disney Dreams Daylight or something like that. And that was really clever. Um, there was one bit, I'll insert a picture here, where the drones made the 30 symbol um, behind the Paris, behind the castle, sorry, in Paris, and it looked incredible. It was so, so good. Um, and then the fireworks followed afterwards. As I alluded to in the vlog, I decided against filming. There were so many people around with kids on shoulders and mobile phones out themselves recording. I thought, no, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm just going to watch for myself and fully enjoy it because I knew it was on the bucket list and I wanted to enjoy it. I didn't want to think, well, I don't remember it because I was vlogging. I'm sure there is vlogs out there or videos of people that have actually filmed the whole entire thing from right up at the front. We were quite far back, but still had a really good view. We were stood just outside Casey's Corner. Um, so we were right at the top of Main Street, but it was a fantastic view. When I say they did different songs and things they did songs from like hunchback of notre dame which i've not heard many people do um or many disney parks do hunchback's kind of one that like gets hidden away um and i love it it's one of my favorites they also covered brave there was a little bit of little mermaid that was a bit disappointing um and there was no frozen which i was shocked about because they're building a massive frozen park I don't know um but yeah the fireworks were well worth staying up to the rides do open until that time so if you want to, people start getting their sp their spots for the fireworks about an hour hour and a half before they even start I wouldn't that to me is wasted time I would go and do a few of the rides I mean we went about an hour half an hour no not even that i think we went about half 10 to our spot so we had a 20 minute wait um which is just like another ride really um a 20 minute wait for the drone show but we like i say we were right at the top of main streets just outside casey's corner it was a fantastic view so i would say go further back because you don't have to go so early and you can get out of the park even quicker afterwards because it's a late one <laughs> The next two I'm going to bundle together in this little clip um, because these are the two that we didn't do. So the first one is to go for drinks at the Marvel Hotel. And the second one was to go to the Marvel Hotel and look at the photo opportunity place that they have there. <sighs> we were so tired all the time when we were there because you're doing like over 20,000 steps a day. And obviously you're waiting for rides. It's a really tiring day. And where the Marvel Hotel is, you have to go out of the parks all the way through Disney Village and then through like a security park, round a, round a lake, and then it's there. It is quite a walk away. It's it's easy doable. Um, we maybe should have done it on the first day just to kind of do it and tick it off. Because by the time it came to thinking about doing it on the, on the Monday and the Tuesday, we were too tired to walk all that way and our feet were hurting. But we did do the Marvel Hotel last year. So we went there last year and had drinks at the Skyline Bar. And it is really cool. If I can find any photos, I'll put them in now. But it basically has a big LED screen behind the bar. And things like Spider-Man and Iron Man come flying across. And like it's very interactive, very immersive. Um, and the cocktails were 
unreal. I think we had ones based on like the Hulk. I had a purple cosmic one for Guardians of the Galaxy. They were really, really, really good cocktails. Not too cheap, but not too expensive either. Um, and they were really fancy, like a proper cocktail bar. So even though we didn't do them this time, I would recommend anybody to go and do them because it's nice to just have a little break away from the parks, but something that still makes that makes you feel like you've got that Disney magic. The next one, as you'll have seen in the haul, was to get a Disney Donald or Daisy Duck plush. We got Donald! So we finally picked up a Donald Duck plush. Donald is Mike's favourite. I have got to admit he's pretty cute. Um, so we bought him from World of Disney, I think on like the second day. I think I bought him after the fireworks. Um, so now we just have Daisy to go. So maybe Daisy will be on our next trip. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Second to last point on the list was to see five characters, five, out in the wild or at meet and greets. We did this before lunchtime on the first day. So we got to the parks on the Sunday, I think about half ten. By one o'clock we had seen more than five characters. It was brilliant. So we walked in, we went straight to studios, we saw Goofy, then we went through the main bit and we went to Avengers Campus. We saw the Wasp, we saw, oh, we then did Web Slinger. We came off and we saw one of the Marvel shows on the roof with Black Widow and Black Panther and Spider-Man. We then saw Iron Man, Loki, Captain Marvel, um Thor all come out where the um Avengers ship is. We saw Winter Soldier. No, I have said this while we were there and Mike kept going mad at me. It was Falcon. <laughs> that is now Captain America. We saw him in the main park. I gave him a high five. Genie was in the back of one of my videos. Um we saw Captain Hook, we saw Jack Sparrow, we saw Peter Pan and Wendy, we saw Belle just wandering past it's a small world. It was amazing. We saw Aurora. We saw, I'm trying to think, we saw Pluto. We saw Goofy. We saw Geppetto and Pinocchio it was so cute. I saw them when we were queuing for It's a Small World and I was like, that's one of the cutest meet and greets I've ever seen. Like Geppetto and Pinocchio. It was adorable. We saw Mary and Bert and the penguins from Jolly Holiday and Mary Poppins. Um, we saw somebody else and it's just gone completely out of my head. We saw Jesse in Walt Disney. I would say if you want, oh, we saw the Incredibles in Walt Disney Studios. That was that was really cool. They were going round on like scooters. It was brilliant. I would say if you want to see more characters, go to Disneyland Park. If you want to go to Disneyland Studios, Walt Disney Studios, I think it's called, and see more characters go to Avengers Campus because they come out all the time. That was another one we saw. We saw um, Star-Lord and Gamora when we came out of Star Factory on the last night doing the dance party, which was so cool. We also saw Scrooge McDuck. Oh, we saw so many. We saw so many characters. I can't believe how many we saw. That's ridiculous. So yeah, so we'd achieved the five within about two hours of being in the parks. We saw Piglet. Piglet. Piglet was dead cute. A little girl ran up to her and hugged her and I was just like, I want to do that. But I was already in the ride for Casey Jr.'s train journey thing. And it was quite a good ride, actually. But, you know, I think I'd rather have met Piglet. The last point. I am so, so happy we did this. The last point was to ride Crush's Coaster. And we did it! Thanks to the thunder. So in my last video when we did the haul i talked about there being a thunderstorm on the sunday night and we brought we bought ponchos from the shop just outside of pinocchio's well the parks cleared the parks emptied literally emptied everything was down to like five ten minute walk on we went on peter pan we've never done Peter. we did peter pan in florida but peter pan in disneyland paris never drops below about 55 minutes it was down to about five minutes we literally walked on um, we went and did Web Slinger, we did Buzz, and then we were like, let's head over to studios and let's see what Crush's Coaster was at. It was at 20 minutes. It was practically a walk-on. 
I could not believe how quick it went. It we barely we barely stood still in the queue. We just kept walking. It was everything I'd hoped for and more. I don't know if I would necessarily queue more than an hour. It is in the dark. So a lot of it you can't see. Um but I love the whole theming of it. When you first go in and there's the seagulls doing the mine, mine, mine. It's just unreal um you're sat in an actual tortoise shell not an actual one but like a tortoise shell shaped vehicle um and you go around me and mike went backwards which was so cool it was awesome so yeah it was everything i hoped it would be i'm so so glad i can finally tick it off that we've actually done it without the thunder it probably wouldn't have been possible we might have had to buy a premiere but we've done it we have done it so that's the bucket list. We did eight out of 10, which I don't think is bad. I really don't. Not for a first one. Yes, I would have loved to have done them all. I think Mike would as well. Mike's a huge Pokemon fan. So collecting them all, ticking everything off would have been amazing. Um, but the two that we didn't do are ones that we would either done before or we kind of put in there to bulk it out. Um, next time we go to a disney park or we go to disneyland paris i will do another bucket list because i thoroughly enjoyed having it in the back of my head that we were trying to tick things off um it just it just added another kind of dimension to the experience um so yeah it was really good i would recommend anybody to do your research on the parks and try and make your own bucket list where possible um i'm hoping next time we go i might be able to do a few more meet and greets because i did quite a few in florida and i did love it it's just ace um it's just you proper immerse in the magic when you do the meet and greets even as like an adult i, I love it um so that's the end of this video i will shortly hopefully in the next few days depending on when i can film it be uploading a disneyland paris tips and tricks the tips and tricks won't necessarily be like disney endorsed or anything like that they are just things that i find useful that i have learned from other vloggers or social media influencers that i found to be super helpful when we went they will either be tips for before you book before you go and while you're there um so i will also in that video cover the tax because i know a lot of people have asked me a lot of people have messaged me on my instagram messaging me asking me about the tax so i will do a bit of a section on that video on that because i took some photos along the way but it is so easy so easy and you basically get money back you get money back you buy things and then some of them are free because you get money back it's so easy so i'll cover that in the next video but if you've enjoyed this video please share the love like it subscribe to the channel turn on all of those notifications so you can see when i next go online and then please comment below if you have any ideas for any future vlogs i love reading comments i love interacting with people out there go follow me on instagram it's at from kel to bell i'm over there I think there's a good few hundred of you on there following me now but i'd love to increase that and make the channel grow and the instagram grow so please head over there and give us a follow uh, my phone driving me mad um yeah so any questions anything you want to know put it in the comments box below but until next time i'll leave it there take care everyone see you again soon